I can tell you right now, we believe in the juries, so we trust them, we trust them, okay? And we have faith with them, and our lawyers, they're excellent lawyers, and it's all up to them, that's all I can say. It's up to the jurors. Supporters there of Noor Stallman, we are waiting for a verdict in the trial of the Orlando nightclub shooter's widow. Noor Salman is charged with providing material support to a foreign terror organization and obstruction of justice. If convicted, she could face life in prison. Prosecutors say she helped her husband plan the attack on the Pulse nightclub that left 49 people dead in 2016. Joining us now, David Bruno, a criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, and Emily Campagno, a former criminal defense attorney. Thanks very much for being here. Hi, John. David, you've been kind of keeping tabs on this case pretty closely. How do you see it going when the jury comes out to announce a verdict? John, I think this could go either way. And the reason I say that is because the defense really attacked the way that the feds took the statements. And this is their M.O. I am very surprised in this day and age with technology that they cannot record statements. There's three of them. Not one of them is recorded. The third's the most important. And in it, she said that she cased the Pulse nightclub with her husband. And that was just not true. So she either said it and was coerced to say it or it was inaccurate. But the government has come up, come up and said, no, they did not case it. In fact, the latest news was that they targeted Disney. Yeah. Emily, um, she is saying that her husband, you know, essentially carried all of this out on his own, that she had no knowledge, that she didn't, you know, aid or abet in any way. Um, but then it came out that his father was an FBI informant. We only found that out during the course of this trial. Um, the judge was asked to throw out the trial by, and throw out the case by the defense, said no. What do you think about that? Is that the right call? That was absolutely the right call. Note, because of this defendant, law enforcement learned via her mouth that Omar Mateen was actively preparing for jihad, was including her in the deliberation process of what targets would bring the most maximum destruction, who was casing Disneyland while they were there on a family video that was picked up on surveillance video. And now she alleges that she was coerced when there are no actual allegations of breach of the criminal procedure structure designed to prevent against coercion simply based on an alleged diminished IQ, though she was deemed competent to stand trial. So here, to me, just as the judge did not buy the mistrial move by the defense, the jury will not buy her defense here. It's simply inadequate. So you think they're voting to convict? Absolutely. All right. You know, John, what was interesting to me is that we did not hear anything about uh, abuse of domestic violence. It was something that was talked about very much prior to the, right. to the case. They did not go that route. They did not say she was coerced into this crime. They essentially said she did not know and did not participate. What about, Emily, what about David's points that the FBI didn't video record or audio record her statements? I mean, she implicated herself pretty strongly in some of these statements. Absolutely, but the absence of that doesn't mean that they're not true. And note as well, she admitted in different formats. So it's not about the lack of recording for her to now retract the statement and argue coercion. There's simply an overwhelming volume of evidence that she was, in fact, included on it. Again, as I said earlier, the fact that she is the ultimate source of so much information we have on Omar Mateen, including the daily deliberative process. And again, bringing in the father-in-law, who now is being investigated for providing material support as well. It's a stretch to believe she had no idea about it. But there was also, David, that, that text, that curious text that sure. she sent him or exchanged with him on the night of the attack saying, you know, if your mother calls, just tell him that you're with Mateen, this friend of his. Yeah, there's no question about that. I, I am not saying this jury's coming back not guilty. I just could see it as a possible outcome. But that text that you refer to is absolutely damning. Uh, she refers to an individual who was not in Florida. He was actually in Maryland. Uh, and and that was not possible. So that is a problematic text message for this defense. As we said, the jury is deliberating the verdict. We could find out what they think today. We'll certainly let our new viewers know what happens. David Bruno, Emily Campagno, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.